When you look at Photon Maiden, some very obvious dynamics pop up. First, you have the loudest one, Noah freaking out over Saki. Of course, as the physical embodiment of the word cute, Saki would catch Noah's attention. And for some odd reason, Saki is the only cute person whose personal space she respects. And I'm not even exaggerating, this is literally written in the wiki. But that statement of course fails to mention another character, who Noah can respect the personal space of, Toa. Now, like any Photon fan, I could talk about Noah Toa for ages. The way that Noah can only remain calm around one cute person, the way that their hobbies have suspiciously large overlap, etc. But you didn't click on this video for Noah Toa dynamics. We're here to talk about a layer deeper. Well, a few layers deeper. You've got to look past the Noah Toa, past Ibuki scolding Toa for crepes, and into the depths of... Actually, I don't have a really good name for these two. It's Saki and Ibuki. While people are busy shipping Noah Toa or not, I'm here admiring their leftovers. But uh, does anyone have a better name than that? Anyways, this is more than just leftovers. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's put on our tinfoil hats and dive into the world of one of my favorite relationships, friendships, regular ships, whatever. So we'll start with the interactions, and then after, we'll go into why it works. Also, All Mix is new, so I won't be including any interactions from there for the sake of spoilers. That being said, I will have to spoil their relationship event, the most obvious place to look. Actually, fun fact, I had these two paired in my mind before I even read the event. And after reading the event, well, you might say I squealed like a preteen boy band fan. So, what interactions can we glean from this? Of course, there's the beginning where Ibuki notices something wrong with Saki, but we can't say that she'd be the only one to notice. After all, Photon Maiden is good friends, and most people would notice when their friends are feeling down. But if you combine this with First Mix, later in the event story, and later on in the specific card stories, then you have a constant trend of Ibuki being the one to catch on when Saki is feeling off or acting different, despite her demeanor being less expressive than the other characters. Sort of like a Saki whisperer or translator? Anyways, after that, we have Saki taking Ibuki's words to heart the most. Of course, as the leader, Ibuki's words might have more sway over the rest of Photon Maiden, but one could argue that this goes deeper than that. That it's because she trusts Ibuki the most. And that might be for good reason, too. It is made clear, when Saki is trying too hard to be considerate of others, that all three of them notice. Toa and Noah are both surprised, but only Ibuki goes to check on her, thus leading to her eventually being able to solve the problem later. Later in the event, there is also Ibuki sharing her past with Saki, but that's not really shipping fodder, it's more like a cute moment if you already like them together. Another reason that Saki might trust Ibuki the most comes up in not the relation event, but the main unit stories. Specifically, chapter 1. In this chapter, there's a section where all the Photon members try to get closer to Saki. Toa drags her shopping, Noah asks to join Saki for people observation, but Ibuki just straight up tells her why she pulled her aside. She felt it was necessary to know her better, so that's what she was trying to do. She was the most straightforward with her approach, and maybe to Saki, her direct nature makes her more trustworthy. Side note, Saki actually says that Ibuki's straightforwardness makes her a more genuine person according to her first introduction episode. Anyways, coming back to chapter 1, we have the central conflict. The fact that the unit is not completely in sync specifically because they don't know much about Saki. Saki herself says that it's because she doesn't talk, but Ibuki says it's for a different reason. She fears that she may have not made enough of an effort to approach Saki. And I have yet another reason. Now before you dismiss this as a silly little headcanon, just hear me out. I think that it's because she trusted Saki too much. When trying to resolve the issue of not knowing Saki well enough, Ibuki says that she didn't know much about music and that Saki seemed to know what she was doing, so she let her handle that area of Photon Maiden. This, to me, shows that she was immediately able to entrust a huge part of the group's image to Saki, despite coming off distinctly as a leader. Even before the producer leaves, uh, spoilers, the other girls and even Ibuki thinks of herself as the leader. When Noatoa are at an impasse at a live show, 
Ibuki is called to have the final say. Also, in Saki's first impressions, Toa straight up says that Ibuki is their leader. Despite this, Ibuki in chapter 1 of the main story trusted Saki to handle the music. In fact, she may have trusted her to a fault. Ibuki said that she might have given up on trying to understand Saki, but we know Ibuki, she's not the type to give up on anything. Sure, she may have been quick to suggest that synesthesia was a bit difficult to put into words when Noah Toa tried to explain it in their own terms, but that could also be chalked up to her seeing how Saki was not very talkative, and that conversation sort of put her on the spot. So, rather than giving up on understanding, I felt it was more like giving her the space she needed at the time. And if you think she didn't need space, well, even after the episodes where they get to know Saki better, she says that she will make an effort to talk more in the future, but she is not quite ready yet, meaning that at any time before that, she also would have been uncomfortable talking. And while we're on this topic, I want to highlight a few more examples of Ibuki basically being a proud and protective parent to Saki. In area conversations, we get an interaction where Saki trips, and Ibuki completely overreacts, offering not just a band-aid, but taking her to the nurse's office while carrying her on her back. There's also a four coma mix, where Maho asks about Photon's greatest strength. They all agree that it's Saki being cute. A couple things about this. First of all, Toa and Noah are pretty open about the stuff they consider cute. Toa with idols and Noah with, well, everything. But Ibuki doesn't commonly express her opinions on cute things. This makes her referring to Saki as cute stand out. Now, if you think that this just might be because two of the three Photon members would have said it, so we might as well have all of them say it for the gag, think again. In this scene, Ibuki is back hugging Saki, and yes, that is adorable, and yes, I did scream like Noah, but that is not all. She hugs Saki for nine panels straight, all the while gushing about her ability like a proud parent. You can see she's holding Saki, still holding, still holding, and on the 10th panel, she finally lets go. When Ibuki finds out that Saki is living alone, she creates a meal plan for her, which is brought up in Ibuki's first impressions episode. And finally, in first mix, when Saki is laying on the floor, she comes to check on her. But that's more of a whole unit thing, so that's why I'm just leaving it as a sort of footnote in this list. Moving on to the second chapter of the main unit stories, I think there is a very interesting interaction between Ibuki and Saki. Saki notices Ibuki acting weird, and she calls Ibuki out for hiding something. They all confront Ibuki, of course, but Saki takes it the most seriously. Now, the interesting thing is what she confronts her with. The group points out how Ibuki was trying to shoulder the burden herself and how that wouldn't work because they need to share the burdens as a team in order to properly respond. Now, this alone is fairly standard, but it stood out to me that in the relationship event, the roles are reversed, and Ibuki, having taken these words to heart, gets to remind Saki that she's part of a team, and that consideration goes both ways. You might call that repetitive, but I choose to think of it as a narrative parallel. I think it's great to see that the events of the second chapter story really affected Ibuki's character, and she gets to share that character development with Saki in the relationship event. Now, there are a couple miscellaneous interactions that I find adorable. Saki remembers what Ibuki says in an interview that one time about not liking pizza, how precious. They also get into an apology loop when Saki discovers that Ibuki likes pizza but can't eat it for the sake of her diet. And Ibuki is willing to quintuple her training regimen. Keep in mind that this is Ibuki, so her training regimen is already insane. But because Saki invited her, she'll quintuple her regimen to eat pizza together. Oh my god. <clears throat> Ibuki also describes her first meeting with Saki to be dreamlike because of how lucky she felt to be in a unit with her. Damn. She also agrees with Noah when she goes off on a cute rant about Saki. Both of these happen in the standard 4-star episode for Saki. Oh, and in the Shrine Maiden story, I am 90% sure that she's not jealous of Saki being close with the cats, she's jealous of the cats being close with Saki. So, with all of those interactions, let's discuss why this works. First of all, based on their general personalities, would they have chemistry? I'd say yes. Ibuki is determined and intense with training, 
but makes a conscious effort not to push Saki too far. She doesn't play favorites because that's not the kind of person she is, so she never goes overboard to the point where Saki feels patronized, but she is always considerate of her strengths and limits. Then we have Saki who has trouble understanding social cues at the beginning of the main unit story, and Ibuki who is always direct and straightforward, which means there is seldom a misunderstanding. This clear communication goes on to build a level of trust surpassing even the childhood friendships in D4DJ. Then of course we have the position of Ibuki as the leader and Saki as the youngest member of Photon. And while Toa and Noah both give Saki special consideration because she is cute, the treatment she receives from Ibuki is different. I'd argue it's more substantial. For example, if Saki was feeling down, Noah and Toa might try to cheer her up, but Ibuki would dive into the heart of the problem. I think Ibuki's drive to help others even if they may not directly ask for it also works very well with Saki, who has trouble communicating and asking for help. Like I mentioned, both Saki and Ibuki got to teach each other the importance of trusting your team and to share a burden, to not take the whole burden upon yourself. I think this is based in another aspect where these two mirror each other. They strive to be like the other. Ibuki sees Saki and recognizes her skill as far above her own, but rather than being discouraged, she instead sees Saki as a goal, a motivation. And likewise, Saki sees Ibuki as a goal as well, but in this case, Saki is not striving to match her skill, but she is striving to be as emotionally mature and reliable as Ibuki. Their constant learning from each other creates a healthy loop of development between the two and leads to cute interactions like this. Now, I will admit, Leftovers isn't a perfect ship. It does have a big flaw. Professionalism. When doing Photon Maiden work, Ibuki is the leader, and she acts like it. The others listen to her, and work gets done. But outside of practice, Noah and Toa bicker with Ibuki as equals. In fact, Noah and Toa interact with each other the same way no matter what setting they're in. And in a way, Ibuki and Saki do too. But while Noah and Toa bicker like a married couple everywhere they go, Ibuki and Saki basically stay in work mode. Ibuki is very goal-oriented, and Saki is very professional, so it makes sense that their interactions are like this, but Ibuki and Saki don't have a lot of casual conversations. Their conversations, while cute, are about work or school. Compare this to the conversation we get between Toa and Saki in Saki's fourth story episode. Toa watches a program about space and is excited to talk about it with Saki. It's a casual conversation. And of course, going back to the main unit story number one, Ibuki was the most honest with her intentions when trying to get to know Saki better, but as a trade-off, Noah and Toa had a much more casual time with Saki, while Ibuki went straight back into work mode. Ibuki is straightforward, and yes, this is great when Saki needs a clear sign, but Ibuki is also straight-laced, meaning she goes straight to work, and Saki, ever trusting in Ibuki, follows her straight to work. Basically what I'm trying to say is without some very, very contrived situation, we are never going to get Saki Lap Pillow or Noah Toa Chocolate levels of leftover shipping fodder. So uh, yeah, those were my thoughts on leftovers in about, oh my god, 14 minutes? Um, that's gonna be a pain to edit. Good luck future me, and uh, see ya!